if a man came into your life, wouldn't you want to compromise? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> a man comes into my life and I have to compromise? You must think about that one again. <laughs> Eartha Kitt was an American singer and actress that was one of the most successful black entertainers in the 1950s and 60s. She was a trailblazer, a legend, and true sex icon. Eartha Mae Keith was born on January 27, 1927, in North Carolina. Her mother was named Annie Mae Keith and was of Cherokee and African descent. Now, Eartha never really knew her father and little concrete information is known about her father, but it is said that he was the white son of the owner that owned the farm Annie worked on, and he took advantage of Eartha's mother impregnating her, making Eartha mixed race. Eartha claimed to have received a lot of hate for her mixed race amongst her black family and peers. She said they never really trusted and approved of her because her father was a white man, and she had fair skin and reddish hair, so she was instantly an outcast. Her mother kept her daughter though, but when Eartha's mother got into a relationship with a fellow black man, he did not like Eartha at all because of her mixed race, and he told her mother how much he did not like her presence. So sadly, Annie Mae sent Eartha to live with a relative, Aunt Rosa, leaving her abandoned. Something that affected Eartha harshly and stuck with her for the rest of her life. Eartha was mistreated here, and also and not long after she was sent to live with another relative named Mamie Kid in the center of black culture in America at the time, Harlem, New York. And while she was 16, she was just minding her business on the street when a lady asked her for some directions. While Eartha was giving her directions, the lady told Eartha that she was a part of a dance group called the Catherine Dunham Dance Company, which was the first African-American modern dance company, and Eartha instantly said yes. Kit joined the group, and she was an instant success. People loved to see her energetic self move all around the stage. Then when they found out she could sing, she was loved even more by audiences. They put her on a platform on the stage to sing, and she wowed them. She performed with the company from 1943 to 1948. After she left the Catherine Dunham Company, Eartha was performing her own shows at nightclubs around America and even Paris, and she really built a reputation on the scene. She created a unique, sexually provocative style, imitating cat noises with sexual purrs, squinted eyes, slow enticing movements, and tongue rolls. Eartha brought a new sense of sensuality to audiences that weren't really seen before. At this time in the late 40s and early 50s, there had been many bombshells made famous for their beauty and sex appeal, like Rita Hayworth, Lana Turner, Hedy Lamar, Lena Horne, and even Jean Harlow. But none of them had created and mastered such a unique niche persona and style like Eartha had. And this made Eartha a live sensation that men everyone went crazy for. She just knew how to entice men and use her dark femininity to make them fall for her, even when their rivals was right next to them. She was bold too. Even if men's girlfriends or wives are next to them, she would steal their attention directly in front of their faces. Guess they should have stayed at home. As Eartha's live act became a hit, she thrived in Broadway, starring in 1950s, Helen of Troy, and New Faces in 1952. Broadway audiences fell in love with her just as much as clubs did. But when she started releasing her own songs, this is what helped boost her career to its real superstardom and cement her in history. Eartha started to star in movies too, including the film version of The New Faces, which featured her singing the song, C'est Si Bon. Due to Eartha performing a lot in Paris, she became fluent in French, which she used in the song, C'est Si Bon. This song and other songs from Kit were very successful, selling hundreds of thousands of records. But it was this next song that really became a huge hit, a historical classic in her signature song. This song is, Sensei Baby. In the song, we hear Eartha seductively asking Santa to bring her riches and great things, and this made people go crazy. And when the music video came out, mouths were dropped. As Eartha held herself nakedly with only a white fur to cover her, she enticingly glided across the room. Her voice was so unique, sassy, sexy, and sharp. And her, vo her speaking voice and her singing voice was as if she was from America, England, and France all at the same time. Like, that's what really made her stand out. Her voice and movements were so alluring and tantalizing that people couldn't resist this new sense of sexual energy oozing from Eartha effortlessly. Santa Baby has become a classic song and is still played heavily every Christmas season. At this point, Eartha is a bona fide, certified superstar, and she lived and carried herself like one. She ate what she wanted, she said what she wanted, men got her anything she wanted, and she pulled men like it was nothing. Eartha was a sexual man magnet. Her dark feminine energy was just so strong that no one could hold back. 
Everyone in the business and America wanted a piece of Earth to kick. She was sassy, confident, sexy, and this obviously bothered women in middle white America as women felt uncomfortable because they knew they could not compete. Here you have this outspoken, confident, sexy black woman being successful, having her way, being outspoken about politics, speaking her beliefs, even if they didn't go with the status quo, and being lusted over by white men. Oh yeah, white women were definitely angry with Eartha Kitt. Now, Eartha Kitt became Hollywood's first bad girl, especially for black women. And like I was saying earlier, she loved to enjoy herself and was a free spirit that believed we are supposed to be pleasured in any way by anyone we see fit. She allegedly had countless stars, including star actor Sammy Davis Jr., who wanted to marry her so bad, but she rejected him. Legendary jazz star Nat King Cole, who was one of the biggest stars in the 1950s. He was actually planning on leaving his wife for her, but didn't go through because he knew that she couldn't be contained and would be on to the next sooner or later. She allegedly slept with number one actor Sidney Poitier, Harry Belafonte, and she had James Dean and Paul Newman at the same time. Yes, Eartha Kitt said she had a threesome with James Dean and Paul Newman, saying it was the best sex she ever had. She actually had a very intimate sexual relationship with James Dean prior to the threesome. Eartha kept living her wild, glamorous life and eventually had a daughter named Kit Shapiro in 1961. And her stardom grew even more when she starred as the Catwoman in Batman in 1967. This role was perfect for her. She embodied the Catwoman long before the show. It was a part of her brand, being this sexually charged, seductive pern icon. So when she got the role, America just went crazy over her. Her unique voice was perfect for the character. The way she wore her long ponytail and moved her hips temptingly, and her sassiness and wit made her just shine. It seemed like nothing could stop Earth at the top of her fame. But this proved false when in 1968, she was invited to the White House for a luncheon with other influential women in politics, including the first lady, Lady Bird Johnson. Now, we know that Eartha Kitt was not one to hold her tongue and spoke her mind freely whenever she wanted and she always was an activist. So when the first lady asked her about the Vietnam War, she did exactly that. She spoke her mind, stating, you send the best of this country off to be shot and maimed. No wonder the kids rebel and take part. The children of America are not rebelling for no reason. They are not hippies for no reason at all. We don't have what we have on Sunset Boulevard for no reason. They are rebelling against something. There are so many things burning the people of this country, particularly mothers. They feel they are going to raise sons, and I know what it's like, and you have children of your own, Mrs. Johnson. We raise children and we send them to war. This statement that she made was true, and she said it with no hesitation, but it literally ended her whole career in America. Now we have cancel culture, where the people and fans end someone's career. But before the internet, there was a term called blackballing or blacklisting, where artists' careers ended or put on hold. Resources and connections are ripped from them because the gatekeepers and powers that be at a very high level are angry at them. And the people that were angry with Eartha was the U.S. government, the president, the FBI, the CIA. After Eartha made those comments, the first lady burst into tears out of shame. And this is what Eartha had to say about the situation. It's apparently an embarrassing moment for Mrs. Johnson. Do you have any regrets about that? No, I don't have any regrets about it at all. Why should I be upset by the fact that she was embarrassed? That's her problem. The president was very angry with her now, and he made sure that she would never work again, letting all studios in the country know that if they hired her, they would be shut down. Then she was branded a quote-unquote sadistic nymphomaniac. And the president made sure the FBI released all types of false information and just bad narratives all around the country that would tarnish her name, saying all she thought about was men and saying she was insane. The FBI was following her and tapping her calls and really made her home name non-existent in the U.S. after all the work she did and great things she accomplished. So, since she couldn't make it in the U.S., she went overseas and became very successful there, like she always had been, performing in Europe and Asia. First, we got to give Eartha a round of applause for what she did. She stood on what she believed, no matter who was around, whether it was the president or anybody. She knew the Vietnam War was wrong, so she told the White House that they were wrong. And this one thing for anybody to talk about the government, but for a black woman to do this, especially in the racist 1960s, man, she an icon. She was a beast. And I love that for her. Eventually, years later, she did come back to the States, and she had moderate success in her later years in show business. But her career was forever stained by that one meeting. And I honestly don't think she regretted it. Arthur kept working and had minor roles in movies like Boomerang, Holes, and The Emperor's New Groove. She spent her last days with her daughter peacefully and passed on December 25th, 2008, 
at the age of 81. Her daughter says she went out like the fighters who she always was, yelling at the top of her lungs. What an icon. Eartha Kid's a legacy will never die. She was a feminist icon, trailblazer for women everywhere, and a symbol of empowerment and sexual freedom and representation. She really was a phenomenal woman and Hollywood's first bad girl.